All right, mic check, mic check. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to our global audience. <laughs> you guys are all over the place, so wherever you may be watching from, whatever time of day it may be, thank you for being here, hanging out with us. People of the internet, Retro Raconteur here. I'm just a dad who loves games and the stories they tell. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, the vibes, man, they're, they're at an all-time high right now. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, folks, because we are getting ready to watch a brand new Hogwarts Legacy gameplay showcase. Uh, I think the rumor I saw was that it's supposed to be, apparently, if the Reddit... Not hackers, but um, people who kind of looked at the code and stuff. I think it's supposed to be around 35, 36 minutes long. We'll see if those are correct. Welcome to Gryffindor. So how's everybody doing today, man? How's everybody doing? Hold on, we just had a whole bunch of members pop through right there. We just had a whole bunch of members. By the way, Land of Hogwarts, good to see you here. I know our normal stream time, Land of Hogwarts, can never make those, so... <laughs> There's probably a lot of people in here who don't get to normally watch because of our late streaming time. So, welcome to all of you. Let's see. Okay, somebody just gifted out a bunch of memberships. Who was it? Oh, dude, we have... Wait. Wait. <laughs> wait. Hold on. Hold on. We had three back to back to back. So I think, I think Elwyn got us started off here with five gifted memberships. Elwyn, a member of House Rack and Tour, moderator of the stream as well, moderator over on the Discord. Uh, so five of you received, oh my god, oh my goodness, I can't keep up. Okay, so we're just, there's no way we're gonna have time to say all the names. Uh, for those of you who got gifted anyway, congrats on the gifted memberships. Make sure you thank the person who gifted you. Uh, use those emotes. Today's going to be a great day to use those emotes, guys. Lots of good Wizarding World emotes that we have there, so you can use those anywhere on the channel, even watching videos as well. Uh, then right after Elwyn, our boy Dylan coming in with the five gifted memberships. Dylan, Elwyn, both members of House Rack and Tour. Thank you all so much for the gifted memberships. Uh, and then <laughs> it's just... This is just going to be going like crazy here. Oh, man. All right. So then right after Dylan, we had Nico. All members of House Dragon Tour. All three moderators, by the way, guys. All three of these moderators here of the stream. Uh, so Nico with five. Dylan with five. Elwin with five. And then right after that, Retro Guy Gaming with five <laughs> gifted memberships. You're also not subject to slow mode when you have a membership, by the way, guys. So, get ready. Here, there's the chat's gonna be moving quick today. I have no doubt about that. Chat is gonna be moving very quickly. How are you? And then, Welcome not to be outdone, following up the five, the five, the five, the five. Then we have Noob jumping in there with ten gifted memberships. Let's go, man. What a way to start the live stream here. What a way to start the stream today. Looks like the uh, Hogwarts Legacy countdown has an 11 minutes. We'll go ahead and get the scene switched over here in a bit. Uh, and I will definitely have to disable alerts, I just realized. We will definitely need to turn off the alerts. Actually, let me go ahead and do that now for the next scene that we're going to pull up. Because we don't want, as much as we love the, the great support here... We don't want that going off right in the middle of our, of the gameplay showcase, right? All right, so I need to go to my overlays. Yeah, let's just do this one here. And I think we'll just need to turn that off right there. There we go. So we'll keep, we'll keep this screen up for now. So any of the alerts that come through will show up. Noob, oh man, why did noobs not show the little image? You. See, just Welcome when you think we have it fixed. Gryffindor. There you go. All right, let's say hello to everyone in the chat. Guys, thank you so much for all of uh, the gifteds there to start the stream. Or Division here in the house. We got Tom Snipes here. Jay Rossi here as well. Atomic Dudman, welcome, Atomic Dudman. 
Uh, so to be a member, let me see if this, uh, let's see if, if Nightbot is doing their job today. Come on, Nightbot. Come on. There you go, Nightbot. There you go. Exclamation point join lets you know. Stargeezer Tim, member of House Wreck and Tour, another moderator in the house today. Tim, good to see you, my friend. Alicia here as well. Panda Sniper, good to see Panda Sniper here. Pineapple Sam, go ninja, go. Two members of House Wreck and Tour right there. Uh, let's see, Krista here. Little Picket is back again. Welcome back, Little Picket. Land of Hogwarts. Land of Hogwarts got one of the gifteds. Let's go. Land of Hogwarts. I always see you in the replay squad. Always see you in the replay squad. Definitely appreciate your support there. All right, so we have, let's see, T minus uh, nine minutes, according to the official Hogwarts Legacy post right there. Don't want, Mary Studio says, what? Don't want alerts going off? Yeah, once the gameplay showcase actually starts, we'll want all of the alerts to be, you know, completely muted out <laughs> while that's happening. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, my goodness. We got so many members hanging out today. Let's see. Maddie Bendy is here. Gallifrey. William is here with a channel member. Draco is back once again. I I agree, dude. We the community is incredible, incredible. Tom Snipes, I show sped. Uh, D Bama swag. Uh oh, we got a Bama fan in here. We got a Bama fan. It's all good. It's all good. They're a great team. A great team. <laughs> Trevor Morris is here in the house as well. The reason I kind of pause at that one, Bama Swag, hopefully you don't uh, leave the stream after this, but I'm, I'm originally from Tennessee, so still still a Tennessee fan, but it's all good. It's all good. Uh, Land of Hogwarts, let's see, Natasha Ford, Simeon, Dean Wiggins, let's see, we already said Tom, Tom's AutoCAD Studio, one of the gifted members as well. We got Lucas in the house. Welcome, welcome, guys. It's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a really, really fun day. Uh, like I was saying in the intro, for those of you just jumping in, maybe didn't hear, uh, the rumor is that it's going to be around 36 minutes long or so. Welcome to Gryffindor. And we're getting a look at Broom Flight and Traversal. This is the confirmed stuff we're getting a look at. Broom Flight and Traversal, Advanced welcome Combat, and Introduction to the Room of Requirement. So those are the big three right there. Vibrating Taco, just found you like two months ago. Watch your vids, never caught a stream before. Hey, well, glad you got to catch a stream. See, we normally stream Tuesday evenings around 8 p.m. Eastern time. So for those of you who can make that, that's usually when we do our live streams. Uh, but we have such a worldwide audience. I know the timing doesn't always work for everyone. So, yo, Casey Lawrence, how's it going, Casey? Casey jumping in with a super chat. Just joined the Discord. Casey, that's awesome. I know, Casey, I know you were saying you were a little bit hesitant, so, you know, take it slow. You don't have to jump right in, right? I mean, I honestly, I don't even get to chat in the Discord nearly as much as I would like to. Nearly as much. Um, did you say six minutes? No, uh, 36 minutes, Tom. 36 minutes is the rumored length. There were some folks on, um, on the Reddit saying that they had checked the... I don't know, some kind of like code, behind the scenes code on YouTube that would show, I don't know. So we'll see if they're right. Uh, it's saying six minutes to go, and let's see, we just got a, okay, yeah, we got that super chat. Nice, nice. Hope I'm the next guest host. I mean, we'll see. I don't, I don't think, um, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking probably not because I feel like something would have already happened by now just because of, um how far in advance they've been recording these. I know James recorded his way back. Not, not really sure when Ben recorded his exactly, but I mean, cause it's already mid December. So yeah, I, I mean, it'd be awesome, but nothing, nothing at this time. So we'll see, we'll see. And we got, it's saying six minutes. So just so we don't miss anything, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over. Um, so guys, if you, if you do a super chat or become a member or anything during this time, it won't pop up. My apologies, just because of the scene that we are switching over to here. But uh, you should still see your name go across at the bottom. Alicia with a $2 super chat as well. Shout out to my friend, Illy, or maybe, is it Lily or Illy? Joining for the first time. Nice. Welcome, welcome. All right, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and switch over, guys. 
we definitely do not want to miss anything and for some reason it's not letting us go full screen yet so hopefully once it starts we'll get to uh so the fact that they're like labeling this as gameplay showcase 2 i feel like that means pretty good odds that there is a third one i feel like that but who knows right i mean i feel like january would be a good time for it because they did one let's see was james's was it november and then yeah november so then now december and then january like the build up right to the launch in in february that would be good timing cj how's it going welcome cj steven first time uh first time cart first time chat maybe maybe first time chat six minutes i know let's go let's go so yeah you should still uh if you become a member of super chat you'll see it down there at the bottom in the scroll but it just won't pop up and go crazy <laughs> All right, four minutes, you guys, four minutes, and I'm going to make sure I turn off the music, too. I feel like we're about to watch a movie. I know, dude, I know, and see, I'm so mad because I didn't get to do this for the, uh, when James had his showcase, I didn't get to do this because we had our biggest, like, work training day of the year was that day, and they told us, like, the day before, so there was no, no time to prepare. I couldn't have got out of that one anyway, but, um... This one, I'm actually on a, I'm on my break at work right now. I'm on lunch break. I was like, okay, I got to get started early with work. I don't have, I didn't have any meetings scheduled for today. So it's like, I can, I can time it just right. So I take my lunch right when the showcase is about to start. Um, and you know, we'll go for a little bit after. And then of course we will, uh, man, we'll have multiple videos coming out and then a full live stream breakdown next week. So for those of you who maybe don't get to uh, check out all of our streams, we do stream regularly right here on YouTube. Usually 8 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday evenings is usually when we do. Noob with a super chat. I see you, Noob. I can still see the super chats even if they don't pop up and go crazy. Noob says, uh, Retro, get your hydration. Also, you should show your RAR moment to the channel. Oh, yeah. Noob has a great clip when Noob started this whole RAR thing. R-A-W-R -R on stream. And Noob very quickly uh, made sure to clip that one. Made sure to clip that one. And we do have some hydration here. Cherry Coke Zero, our drink of choice for today. Even got snacks, too. I'm almost out, but these little uh, Trader Joe's dark chocolate almonds. They're so good. So good. We've got just a couple left, though. I'm probably not going to be eating a lot once <laughs> once the stream starts anyway. All right, two minutes. Let's go. I'm going to go ahead and um, turn off the Spotify. Just because we'll want to have make sure this is at full volume once once we go here. Had Coke today, regular Coke. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Coke Zero guy. I, I stopped drinking um, regular sodas, I don't know, about a year or so ago. I gained, I was, I mean, I've always been on the, you know, smaller side, never been a heavy person, but during the pandemic, I definitely put on a little bit of weight, was the heaviest I'd ever been, and I was like, okay, I can't, um, I can't handle this, so stop drinking sodas, and man, during the pandemic, it was just such a weird time, like me and my kid, my kids love ice cream, I, I love ice cream, there was a time when we would just have ice cream, like every night, I was like, okay, we gotta stop, <laughs> we gotta stop this. We got to stop the every night thing. We're just making ice cream sundaes. So, yeah, then as when I cut out that, well, I still eat ice cream, but just like, you know, once or twice a week. And then I cut out all regular sodas too. But, yeah, hydration at the ready. Kungor don't know a single person who didn't gain some. I heard of some people actually lost weight, you know, like from stress levels. But, yeah, I mean, for me, we were just like, I just we just want to make it fun for the kids, you know, like try to make this, a time that they don't look back on when they're older like oh that was such a scary time and you know for a lot of us it was it, there was so much uncertainty especially early all right it says 60 seconds and it should be okay premiere will begin shortly let's go as soon as it goes up i will um actually let me refresh here let me refresh because it needs to let us take this to uh full screen all right, my clock still says 12.59, so. As soon as it changes over to one, I'm going to refresh it again. <laughs> Dominic, I'm in class, but present. Let's go. 
give us a gameplay of Vada Kedavra. I think they're gonna. I think we're gonna get both today. I think we're gonna get both. Gabriella, yo, thank you for the super chat, Gabriella. First time being on a live stream. Hello and thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for showing support with the super chat. Oh, come on. Come on. Where is it? All right, my clock's showing one. My clock's showing one. Let's go, dude. Come on, Chandler. Push the button. <laughs> push the button. Does Chandler have to, like, push the button or something to activate this? Oh, wait. Guys, we already... We already did the countdown. We, we are... <laughs> oh, this... Is this what happened with the last one? See, I didn't get to live stream it. I didn't even get to watch it live, so I don't know. Did they do the same thing there? <laughs> the bait. Oh, we were baited. That disappointment. See, Chandler, I mean, you got to you gotta start the five-minute countdown. You got to set it to go up at 11.50 or what? Uh, 12.55. See, I've, I've, I've had to learn this the hard way. Because if I tell people I'm going live at 8, then it's like, okay, do we start, do I go live at 7.50 and have the 10-minute countdown? <laughs> oh, man, it's all good. They did the same. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I appreciate the chat. Not one of you telling me. None of you deciding to, we're just going to let him find out. Come on, man. Now, in all seriousness, I did see a note from Chandler. So the live stream is not available in 4K. However, I, I guess as soon as this ends, they will be posting the um, the 4K version. So if it looks a little blurry on your screen here, I mean, 1080 should still be should still be really good quality, but um, the 4K one will be obviously much better. That's that's the one you want to look at when you, when you go back and you want to look for all the little secrets and details, which you know, we got to do another one of those now. Um, you definitely want to make sure you're looking at that 4K version for sure. Took like 15 minutes. Gotcha. Okay. How live streams work. Streamer stays clueless and <laughs> learn the hard way. Oh, see, I wish I'd gotten to do the first one. I would have known. I would have known that. Uh, Zero's Wolf of Death. Hey, thank you for the super chat there. Retro, you're a great streamer. Can't wait to see Hogwarts Legacy and be a dark wizard. Hope you and Andy Reloads get to talk together more. Yeah, I hope so too. I'm going to try to be on um, Alex at Podcast Now is having a big, big, big stream on Friday with, I mean, basically almost all of the Hogwarts Legacy creators except Wife Wants a Wizard, which I know he has tried to get Wife Wants a Wizard. Everybody always is like, come on, what about Wife Wants a Wizard? I know Alex has tried for sure to get Wife Wants a Wizard. <clears throat> but, um... I think Wife Wants a Wizard prefers to, you know, kind of maintain his presence in the shadows, <laughs> if you will. But yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to join for the whole thing, um, but I will, I, I am planning to be on that one at some point. It'll probably be more toward the end of that, of that stream. All right, I'm going to tilt my mic away while I chew this very loud almond and we're going to hydrate again. And in addition, it looks like we had um, uh, Rossi with a super chat right right there as well. What type of content will you make after Hogwarts Legacy is out? Yeah, we were talking about this on last night's live stream. So, I mean, I'll definitely keep doing Hogwarts stuff for a while. Especially if they do any kind of DLC or anything like that. But I'm expecting to do more gameplay live streams. Our Tuesday live streams will probably shift into more of just like a general gaming news. I don't know. We'll see like, because that show, our, our Tuesday live stream is so much about chat and the directions that they take us. I usually go in with a loose plan. But yeah, I mean, I'm thinking current topics in gaming, maybe things in the wizarding world. If we can ever get Harry Potter Magic Awakened to come out in the US. And I do have some ideas for some videos. I'm actually already working on um, some video ideas now that will obviously we can always cover gaming news that'll be you know 
I can I can look at what games I'm I'm hyped for, things like Zelda, things like um, Starfield, Final Fantasy. I mean, all all the big games I can look at doing those. Maybe more like uh, you guys mentioned, Andy reloads more covering variety games like Andy does. But with my name being Retro Tour, as we have 20 seconds here to go, oh no. Don't do me like that. Don't scare me. <laughs> I was like, wait, is it my stream or is it their stream? Um, but with my name being Retro Tour, we talk about lots of things with stories in video games. I have some ideas for story as well and how, uh, how stories in games kind of impact us, impact our lives. So stay tuned for that. Here we go. All right, rated T for teen. All right. Is that too loud? Is that just right? On their sound. We want to make sure we can hear it. Just give me a thumbs up if the sound is good. All right, most people saying just right, just right. I'm going to put it back up just a bit then. Back to where I had it. All right, most people saying thumbs up or let's good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Hogwarts what up, Chandler? Gameplay Showcase. I'm Chandler Wood, Community Manager here at Avalanche Software, and I'm honored to introduce you to our panel today. First up, we have community guest host, Ben Snow. Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Thank you so much for having me. <gasps> and from the Avalanche team, we have game director, Alan Tu. Hello, everybody. And assistant Alan designer, with the hands. Kinsey Toner. Hi. And finally, just off screen, capturing gameplay for us, Andrew Corum. Andrew again. <laughs> there he is, there he is. Today, we'll be giving you a taste of the open world via broom flight, a deeper look at combat using the Dark Arts Battle Arena, and a look at your personalizable home within Hogwarts, the room of requirement, where we may even see some beasts. So Dark Arts Battle Arena confirmed. we're starting confirmed. right where we left off in our last gameplay showcase, just outside Hogwarts, Dude, which I, I love that we can, you can walk out of the castle after w walking through everything and then just come out here and take off on your broom out into the open world. Oh my goodness. And Alan, I know that's something that you particularly <laughs> Incendio like. Incendio icon Hogwarts on the right over there. Pretty yeah, sure I'm, that's Incendio. I'm, uh... I'm a big fan of just being able to hop on the broom and, and go anywhere. There's something about kind of like the the sensation of of everything being open to you and just oh I let's go, dude. That I can get to things. I love flying close to the ground, and and I I, I kind of wanted to talk about it just because I feel like um, you know the brooms are fun for me not just because heard somebody of talking all those they flew by, but but because they're not just I have a broom and it's done. Uh, I actually kind of like some of the mechanics in it. So you can oh my gosh. You see all the these little, little things light, popping up. There's a meter there, and and occasionally as Andrew's kind of flying up or flying down, you might notice it it draining or not. And and this isn't the present day where all the broom technology is well known and advanced and 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 everything that we know and love. This is an earlier time where they're still trying to figure out. You know, we're not at the three thousand yet. We're at the like, <laughs> we're at the eleven. So. Oh my goodness! I just I'm just so <laughs> speechless right now because this is just so beautiful. The Sorry, Macy. Too. I was trying, but, but it's uh, the, another the language. Room, is that like the only one, or can you like, upgrade the broom system? Yeah. So we have a good question, Ben. Meet, actually, a broom oh. shop, and so that sells a variety of different brooms. And it was important to us that the player could customize themselves yes. based on their own aesthetic. So they're purely cosmetic, but uh, purely cosmetic. talk okay. to the shopkeep uh, and help them out, he'll actually sell upgrades. Yeah, and those, those upgrades will nice. make it so that where normally the broom, you can only fly, um, you can only go at max speed. It's kind of like a turbo meter down there. You can only go at yep, max yep, speed yep. without the meter going down, kind of closer to the ground. And as you raise into the air, you'll notice the meter drop. And so those upgrades will allow you to increase that distance from the ground. And the the broom owner at at the sporting goods store in in Hogsmeade is trying to perfect the broom and get better at oh, it. Oh, I and, love it. And know it better. And you can participate that and get better and better brooms through that. I see. <laughs> and I, I love that that mechanic encourages you to actually explore the world and kind of stay close to the ground. It's not just a travel mechanic, point A to point B. You're not just flying high over everything. Although it is beautiful. Something I really love doing. 
as well, there's lots to lots to explore on the ground, and so kind of keeping you down at the ground level. And to me, it feels like it's got this kind of surfing vibe over the. Yeah. Over oh my the god! Thing. Like I'm just like I want to snatch the controller from Andrew right now because I want to go to the mountaintop, I want to go to that forest, and to that hamlet. Or well, well, uh, wife wants a wizard. You gotta. <laughs> we, we, we're gonna need a new map, <laughs> awesome. by the way. We're, you know, we're gonna, the overworld we're now. Land here, and I, I the feel surrounding like, area. Like you call it a hamlet is. Oh is, my goodness. It's just perfect, just because that's what we refer to that as, <laughs> and so. Uh, we all know from lore that Hogsmeade is the only all wizarding village within Britain. Oh, that's we wanted other so opportunities slick. to kind of meet other characters out here and to kind of populate the landscape so it's not just kind of, you know, barren as you leave out this direction and that. Dude. Direction. And so we just imagine these different dwellings, these different smaller locations that, that wizards might live so in. So much to break down, in right? The Scottish Highlands. Right. And so it's oh, those. You uh, a little tip. And so we refer to those as hamlets, <laughs> and they're opportunities to learn those wizard stories. Um, how those different locations have kind of like learned to live, what their relationships are with characters at Hogsmeade and Hogwarts. And so they're both quest opportunities out here and a chance to kind of get to know more of the area, even beyond Hogwarts and Hogsmeade that we've already experienced. And you also notice on the mini map, like lots of little icons and each one of those represents- Look at the kid the over there in, pretending in to the ride a broom, I think. Participate in, you know, whether it's a vendor or different puzzles and challenges or different secrets that exist. Um, each one of those icons are different opportunities for gameplay. And you'll notice that, that same thing as we venture out into the open world as well. So when you go out into the open world and you see see those icons, whether they're on the mini map or on your map or off Dude, in the distance, all the icons. those things are opportunities so many breakdowns. to say, like, I want to increase <laughs> We're have my to do inventory it. capacity. There are puzzles left behind by old wizards, you know, that you can solve that actually oh, come grant on. Dro you Drop those. the name. Uh, drop the name. If you see ruins off in, the, off in the distance and you visit them, you might Is find Merlin. opportunities to actually expand and learn about your ancient magic. And as you and as you kind of encounter different enemies dotted on the landscape, sometimes those characters, uh, poachers or dark wizards, might be hoarding different uh, magical resources that are valuable to you. Have a little butter beer. The game. So each one has kind of like a way to connect to our gameplay loops and provide different opportunities that just kind of reward you for. Uh oh, I didn't see a sitting I mean, option. I away when I want to just People are going to lose their mind. Points on the map <laughs> just been going over. There. Can you not well, sit? Well, we've can you not take a seat at the broom already? But there is something that we haven't done so far, and that is uh, oh my Onyx gosh, yes. Mount. Um, we're gonna hop on our Onyx. Let's Hippogriff. go, dude. The Onyx Hippogriff is our pre-order bonus. Oh my, oh God, my gosh! gosh. The, the back. Oh wait, you can use it as a horsey. I mean, a horse. I that as a, a horse. Yeah. Um, as a Hippogriff. The animation you can, you can totally on that. Like a ground mount, and you can lift off into the air. And we tried to make sure that each 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 of those interactions, oh. so the broom's really good at reaching that top speed, at, at kind of traveling the world as quickly as possible. But sometimes it's really nice to get on the hippogriff because of that ground speed uh, or those transitions. Interesting. Uh, and sometimes it just feels amazing just to be riding oh, around yeah. on the hippogriff. Always, <laughs> Alan, always. Yeah, it's it, it really is kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's a great feeling being on it. And it's a great feeling managing those transitions, kind of going from run to fly and just so you can't just run around on the ground with it sure too that, that though that each one of these things that you can That's interact with so have, interesting have a unique identity and a reason for being <laughs> and, oh my god like i see like different like tool areas, wheel like, information the area by the way can you go to like entire map anywhere you go there are regions that are like blocked from you yeah as soon like... as as soon as you there's kind of a moment where the world kind of opens up to you outside okay. of hogwarts as a student and right from that moment uh, early on in the game you can go wherever you want no so way you might find more difficult challenges in different areas no you'll way see different spots as andrew's moving around like you mentioned the swamp um but there, I was we hoping that was how like it'd be. A coast, and we've got different types of environments out in the world just to kind of uh, pepper your experience. I need it now. Exploring, <laughs> things fresh. Uh, all those things exist as we're moving around. So cool. And I love that windmill. It's like so rustic. Like I keep forgetting that this is like 1800s. The Wizarding World we've never really seen before. Like it feels so <laughs> right, authentic. Right. Like it just, it, it, it's part of it. Yeah, I, I love this Vista too. And I can't um, wait to see this in 4K, we're gonna have man. Andrew stop here. We're going to use a bit of dev magic to uh, change the seasons. Actually, I want to see. I want you to see what this world looks yes, like. Yes, winter, uh, please, winter. Snow. Yes, 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 <laughs> please. I love snow. For Ben Snow, right? <laughs> Entering dev commands. <laughs> we got to. I mean, you got to show a snow landscape with our boy Ben Snow here. Oh my God. Dude, so look at it. Oh my goodness. This is so pretty. Like, and you can so kind of just realistic. like hover there in the air with oh the. God, uh, it changes the landscape like completely. Did you guys catch that? Oh like the hippogriff, you kind of just hover with it for a bit. Actual like gameplay impact, like impact on the gameplay, or does it like it's just the weather of Scotland? 
Uh, yeah, we use it. We really use it as a narrative marker through through the game. So similar to progressing through your what the movies line, it was did. Important for us to kind of like have those moments that kind of take my money like when you're reading the books or watching the movies. Where you know, Gallifrey, I'm like out. Title card, Winter, and, <laughs> and now the landscape has changed, and and you're really feeling those that passage of time while you're a student. You know, going through. It's gorgeous, and this isn't even the 4K version. I think, I mean, I think we wanted to duplicate that. Would they and upload this in 4K? Really that it's not just oh boy, on the outside, which. Which I, I agree, I think it looked really beautiful. Um, but within the school as well. So there are moments like when it reaches certain holidays or things like that, where Hogsmeade uh, oh reacts to God. holidays. And oh, yeah, that's been a big request. Decorations around school the reacts to the holidays. And, um, that really helped just kind of make me feel like I'm there. He just confirmed <laughs> it. Let's go. And, and it's not just, uh, it's not just, I mean, it had to be know, there, right? <laughs> it had to those, be there. Those kind of vibe things. Um, like we have a day night cycle, and that day night cycle. It, even though similarly, like it's largely about vibe, when you go into Hogsmeade in the evening, there's less characters there. Uh, around the school, you'll notice it kind of dies down and quiets down. Just oh, when there's right, just yeah. candlelight and students kind of That's like. That's right, because some the of them, a lot of them but go home. In that day night cycle is where we've kind of placed uh, a few items where, you know, whether or not you can collect them or whether or not you can interact with them with, that are a little bit restricted by the day night cycle. Nice. And I love Andrew's flying up here, really high up on the hippogriff. And, and we're just looking at this view of Hogwarts in the distance. It's just absolutely oh my beautiful. Gosh, it's part dude. of what I love most about flying around in this This is huge. Like, this is really or, big. Or, or on the broom. <laughs> no, I, I mean, you talk about going This is really big. So you can see in the distance, and that's one of my... I, I still can't get over, like, no matter... I play this just, like, so much, That question mark still, right there I still that pops up. I can't get over the fact that I can see Hogwarts out there. And there's just like, what is there? About knowing that all of... All of the things inside of it, the classrooms, the students, the professors, um, all the places I can go, I can just fly my hippogriff, land in the courtyard, enter the front doors, and just walk, you know, to the oh library, my to, gosh, classes, to dude. the house, or to my common room. That it's all contiguous. Like, get right. Kind of like one question marks one on those creatures. Exciting to me after all. This I mean, These magical just, creatures, right? They look like wolves or something. Right now, it's just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Interrupt a charging mongrel with Depulso. A lot more time out here. See these little feet that keep popping up. Merlin world. puzzle, maybe right there. Uh, uh, sorry. This is a great opportunity to switch over to combat. I'm trying to like balance how much I'm talking. Kind of an intro to combat this time. My excitement down right now. A lot more of a deep dive. So we can hear what they're saying. Using the Dark Arts Battle Arena, which is part of our. All right, combat deep dive. Let's go. Let's. Go. All right, Andrew's got us in the Forbidden Forest, which is where the Dark Arts Battle Arena is, oh, uh, which is part of the, the Deluxe Forest. and Digital Deluxe Edition. I, I, I love the way that the Dark Arts Battle Arena is actually uh, part of the world. It's integrated into the world, so your experience is more immersive than just choosing an option from from the main menu of the game or something Ooh. like that. Go to the Forbidden Forest. Exactly. Well, you know, there are many reasons <laughs> to go to the Forbidden Forest, but uh, he's also wearing the uh, Dark Arts cosmetic set, mm. and... Uh, here he's pulling out the Thestral, which is oh my God. part of that Dark Arts pack <laughs> from the Deluxe and Digital Deluxe Dude. Edition. So we're going full, full Dark Whoever Arts. Whoever had here. the idea of doing uh, that little that's that little pack in the like animation, this, uh, this battle arena. It is a great brilliant place to show. Off, Give that person a raise. Um, <laughs> really combat in a big way because it unlocks some interesting abilities for you and, and allows you to, to uh, really play around with oh, the uh, little uh, in little toadstools. And is this like the only arena like this in the game where you can like practice? And yeah, do so it? in the in the base game, we have uh, two combat arenas normally that and so everyone mm -hmm. has access to those. And each of the combat arenas are an opportunity to kind of just go through a difficult combat challenge. What? Multiple waves in order to uh, earn a uh, a different cosmetic for your character and add that oh, to your collection. Oh, that's cool. Um, in the case of the, that's no different than the Dark Arts Battle Arena. That's also true. Waves of enemies. Uh, the combat arena. But, With the uh, unforgivable but, curses. Uh, one of the things that we're excited about Ringo the Dark confirmed arena as the, is, the other icon is that we didn't know. you preloaded with different abilities. So uh, the unforgivable curses are something that everyone's going to have access to through the base game. Interesting. Oh, come on, Andrew. In order to kind we're of blurring like out the spells. Their repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> and they can also commit to that down. That's too funny. Talents and things like that. When you when you play the Dark Arts Combat Arena, you actually have access to all those things as kind of like a, a way to Ooh. test them all. And so it's a chance to kind of like tour and play with the Dark Arts and decide whether or not that is a path. I keep wanting to pause. To to. Um, but but yeah, okay. everyone has the same ability to explore explore the dark arts. This is just kind of like a way of pre -game. That's cool. So for those of us who want to be purely good, to show no dark arts, in general, we can uh, still so get a little taste. Jump in here and still get a little start, taste of it, you know? Start battling and we can start talking about <laughs> Dude, uh, the animation on, the on them dropping right. in. <laughs>
That's not stupefy. Oh, the cadavers right away. Oh my That's god. That's AK. <laughs> we're, start, we're starting off strong. Oh my god. Is strong. That, is that was that Kujio? Oh my god. Oh. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So that. You'll, you'll notice right away, like when we use Avada Kedavra, that guy's health bar Just went from instant to Yoda. zero, and we really are trying oh my to gosh. honor the way Avada Kedavra works in the game, uh, even in some pretty extreme situations. Um, you'll you notice guys, that, like the the meter takes up a, a lot longer to yeah, a little uh, cool kind down. of build up as a way to kind of deal with its extreme power. Just that understandable it's still fun to use, and then there's some some ways that we'll probably talk about. To, Not a finisher to, though. To adjust that. But I don't know. I, Not I don't know a if finisher. There are things on the screen that you just have questions about. Well, like, we're, like I see like little blue things pop, uh, pop <laughs> from yeah. the enemies. <laughs> also, we put, like that sign. Well, it's like so in the community we call it the ancient magic sign. I don't know if that's how it's called. Yeah. <laughs> in the game. So, the <laughs> the ancient student, magic so, symbol. Uh, on the development side and in player facing the game, we reference that as your ancient magic meter. Oh, so it is ancient, ancient magic, magic meter. So, yeah. So yeah. as your as your abilities in the game keep growing and you become exposed to some of the secrets about dude, your there's own so kind much, so much own, to process your here. Own abilities, um, you start unlocking new powers. So one of those powers you'll see the R1 button appearing. <laughs> they just, uh, right, the Luna. Game. Back uh, to back to back. An ancient magic. Just show, show up all three of them. Kind of like draw an object to you and fling it at an enemy. Um, okay. But whenever you see the R1 or the L1 plus R1 appear over somebody's head, mm -hmm. so um, that's an ability to cast. Bottom right, guys. Bottom right. Notice the D pad popping up. Uh, that's how they're switching spell. between the spells. Oh, okay. Do a ton of damage against the character. Oh, I see, I see. And the way that manifests Sorry. itself. Uh, we need to listen to Alan. Enemy I'll be fighting. quiet. And you'll see a, a wide variety of enemies in here that are pressuring the player in different ways. You'll notice there's there's uh, <laughs> abilities oh that gosh. kind of bubble up under the player as he's fighting that force him to move. And there's different ways that like, we want the player to kind of move around. Just on the torturing them right and there. That's actually a good link to the ancient magic meter in general. And the reason I say that is because as you're doing different things in combat, you're protegoing and you're doing different abilities and you can kind of spec into it with your talents, there are different ways to get that meter to build faster and faster. But one of the most effective base ways Ooh. to build up that meter fast, that way you can launch these devastating attacks whenever you want to. Is is to perform actually perform combos. combos. So you see that combo here, and it's almost like your your emotions are building up, mm -hmm. and then basically that builds up enough that you can attack someone. But as the combo meter builds up, at some point, dude, you these goblin attacks, and a, a piece of their magic kind of falls out of them. You'll see the blue orbs in in the in the game world, and there's something that only you can see in in the narrative in the world. And it's another reason to move around on the battlefield if you can go up and collect those things and. Them in, they right, get, Nico. They, they the sound effect on Crucio. As we're, playing. we're talking a lot about uh, about spells uh, and magic here, but I think there's another huge component of combat, and that is the, L1, the R1? tools that you can bring to combat as well to kind of uh, change the way you play. And I think Mackenzie uh, knows a lot about the what's L1, going R1 on with the The L1 R1 is the uh, ancient and magic stuff. So the, the tools are really interesting because they're basically like a prior investment. So you can bring the potions and the plants that you grow in the Room of Requirement to combat uh, to essentially kind of help you um, defeat enemies a lot quicker and, and more efficiently. So some of the tools that you'll see here are like the rock skin Dude. potion. So uh -huh. that is something that basically it covers your skin. I'm gonna spend so much this, like, time here. That, Perfecting. Uh, reduces the incoming damage Mount that you're receiving. So against big enemies, hard hitting enemies like trolls, um, that's super. Oh, helpful. two of them. <laughs> um, so much AK in like that destroyed. one. All right, the he's just and collapsed. He takes him out too. Uh, obviously, we have the Wigan Will potion as well, uh, which increases your health. And then we have the focus potion. So when Alan talks about oh my gosh. having to balance a Vada Kedavra Dodge. with a long cooldown, Dodge. because obviously it's an instant kill, uh, one thing you can do is brew a focus potion, and that will increase um, how quickly your your cooldowns uh, regain. Right. Oh my God. Interesting. There's so much like, uh, uh, versatility, like in what the oh! character is doing to the troll right now. Like he's just bouncing around around it. And then you can then, then you have built up AK. And then you the can AK him again. Move around too, like, oh my mm -hmm. goodness. I, I love that our plants are violent. <laughs> yes, and so that's like when we're talking Violent about the plants. almost the uh, setup of the arena. You also have plants that you can Ooh. fight with, and so we have things like the venomous. Yeah, you got an armor that troll. You can put down, and it acts like a turret, and it just kind of shoots enemies around the battlefield. That is so cool. This is like a truly like Hufflepuffian way to approach <laughs> the battle. <laughs> exactly. Yes. 
No, that was super important to us, that there were these like multiple ways. And so you can see there's there's a ton of different things you can use. Uh, the mandrake is one, so you can pull it out. Wolfie, it stuns with, right. Like, piercing cries, enemies. I'm gonna have to uh, rewatch this so many times. And another thing I want to call out uh, that we're seeing on the side of the screen here is these, these dueling feats, which I, I love because I love anything that prompts me to play a game in a different way, a unique way. I don't want to get stuck in my style, you know? Yeah, that's uh, a good question, and, and Luna. So this is a way to... If you it was a one-shot for the troll, for yes. It. If you just want to blast people with spells, go for it. But we also Even the one with to, full health. Uh, have some things over here that might oh! make you use certain plants or certain potions or <laughs> block more or I just yeah, love the random the objects you can use um uh in the prior stream and the field guide challenges this is the way that the field guide manifests like challenges for you to do in combat and mm -hmm. exactly to your point um could i just try to figure out how much damage crucio is doing to, to explore the different systems he's definitely stunned over there the guy in the red over there he's just like them. Explore what they want to do because there really are so many different ways. Like there we go. You got to look at it right there. Uh, when you see the the green X's on characters, that's right. And that's kind of a, through your talents you can unlock this kind of cursing mechanic that sort of like links the fates of these different characters on the battlefield. What? That way, uh, as you get the, the as you're cursing different characters, they all begin sharing damage. And so oh, that's we have tight. things like about a Kadava, which is the insta kill. But if you curse everyone before you insta kill this one guy, they can all drop dead for that kind of ultimate. <laughs> oh, that is sick. So, oh my God. <laughs> there are there are dark arts fantasies. There's fantasies about being more of a defense against the dark arts characters, things like that. That misty step that you see um, occasionally being used on the battlefield. And we can also spec into our potions and plants to make yeah. Them show us the uh, the defense against the dark arts, so Alan. It's all about which type of player you feel like you are and whether or not you want to play with prep. Oh, he just oh. Like Imperio. Like, he just attacked him. And those are all the options. <gasps> that is so cool. Forgot about Imperio. Like, like, I see so much, like, going on on the screen. There's so much complexity. And I, I want to just try it myself, like, which style works best. I mean, I feel like it's the Dark Arts is going to be the easiest <laughs> route. But I, you're, that you're ancient audience. magic, to be honest, feels, like, much more powerful than just the Dark Arts. Yeah. To be fair. And speaking of plants and potions, we are going to be putting the Dark Arts oh. away. Put those unforgivable. They cut off away. Alan right there. Uh, and heading to the Room of Requirement. I wanted to see what he said about the uh, Hogwarts, a personalizable space uh, man, that actually has some like utility as well, here. where you get to brew things and grow things and uh, uh, also care for some beasts. <laughs> All right, oh Andrew's gosh, got us dude. in the room of that requirement. That was so good. That was so uh, good. Wearing, we we kind of went casual mode on the outfit here, wearing a nice jumper. All right, so here are the icons uh, in the bottom right that we were breaking down on a, stream a last night, point, trying to figure out what each of those mean. Uh, <laughs> for uh, the personalization of the space. See what you did there, well. Chandler. See what you did. Not just your character and, and the visuals of your character, but actually this space is a, a place that you can make your own. Um, yeah, it was super important to us that this space really did feel like... Um, your reflection uh, as a wizard. So you can change the architecture in here. What? Uh, <laughs> different themes throughout. Architecture? Uh, starkly different themes <gasps> uh, to really just hammer home that this is this is yours. You oh my god, <laughs> what? <laughs> this is beautiful. We never expected that to be, oh my god. It bends exactly That's the thing right. Is not only can you change the architecture here, but you can actually conjure things that we just didn't uh, even anticipate. You can see. So, except for the bedside tables, you, there's you know. like statues that you can do, and what? ornaments, and tables, and rugs, what? and just a bunch of little things. We're playing The really Sims now. The is this Animal Crossing? Oh my goodness! Because like we we had an idea that those places where you brew stuff, that's where you can change, but you can do all of this. Where do you even get this stuff? Like, there's a furniture store. <laughs> Yeah, so we call them conjurations, uh, and the conjuration recipes conjuration can be purchased recipes. at Tomes and Scrolls in Hogsmeade. Um, purchased but in Hogsmeade. Also, as you engage in different types of gameplay throughout the world, you'll be rewarded with uh, different objects. That's so cool! And you change color. Mm -hmm. You can change the color. You can change the size of it, and you can place it basically anywhere. Oh. Oh my God, <laughs> you can make it super it's tiny. It's like a baby Niffler. Your little house elf friends. The, the system too is designed. It, it's not mechanical. It's what? Mm -hmm. And so you get the magical what? effect of conjuring. Are you kidding me you're, right you're, now? You're actually doing this in the world. Dude, people are gonna spend so much time just in here. The, the people are gonna spend so much like time. That gameplay with yeah. the, the immersive uh, customizing uh, design of personalizing oh the space. Oh my god! Like, and I love the animation how it like appears. You know, like it's not just like there. It's like it almost like mm -hmm. it operates. It is really quite beautiful. And that was the thing is we wanted that what? to look really nice because the magic in the wizarding world is everywhere. It's, it's physical, it's kinetic, and it's whimsical. Me? We really wanted to nail that whimsy in this space. Uh, 
another thing that I wanted to discuss is that that not only animation, can you, dude, like, conjure things and you can change their their look, but you can do that with the utility objects. I have so well. many thoughts, so but I'm trying to listen to and potion stations, and you could change the look of those. Oh my. Uh, as well. And <laughs> these are the areas where, as we had mentioned previously, you'll be growing your plants, you'll be brewing your potions. I had a feeling. Right, right, I had a right, right. feeling this whole room so of requirement area was going to be a big, doing big these, uh, like, kind of nurturing surprise to a lot of this people. Is also the space uh, where you would bring your gear, gear to be identified and gear to have. Um, this is insane, like, dude. This is insane. It, I believe Alan can talk to. Oh, yeah. Um, I, we keep bringing up a little hopping and, pot over and there. How it looks. And, and on a. Like uh, in the game, you can look like anything you want to whenever you want to. Um, but the player will be finding different types of gear that we call it uh, as you progress through the game. Mm -hmm. And essentially, we just know that that clothes and different items. Oh, in the we gotta go back and read that too. Magical properties. And as you uh, as you explore and as you adventure and as you defeat enemies, you're going to be finding different pieces of gear uh, that have different abilities. And that can help you. So there was in blue, your purple, and, and part of you kind orange. of growing as a wizard and advancing as a wizard. Oh, and so there's a huge list. <laughs> and not all the oh time. Oh my uh, goodness! Whenever, whenever you get a new piece of gear, you don't necessarily know exactly what it does. And so there is a station inside of the room of requirement that you can conjure. It's one of the first things you tingling. conjure. Uh, called an gear identification has stats, station, where you right? can actually bring that that gear that you're uncertain about and learn what its abilities are. Right. Yeah. That's so cool. And then as this space advances even further, and the space will eventually grow its own rooms. So Zoro's Wolf of Death. Recipes, uh, thank you for the you know, super like, chat. Like Casey, Mackenzie's thank you as about. well. All these different things keep expanding, and as it expands, eventually you're going to earn what we see here, which is called the loom. And when you set up a loom, it's a, an ability to essentially so called extraordinary. exactly which magical properties are on your gear and take any piece oh of gear and adjust its properties goodness, and dude. tweak what it does. And I mentioned earlier that that you can make anything look like anything. The collection of of cus, uh, of um, appearances, we call it, mm -hmm. or um, cosmetics we've been referring to for words. in right. this stream, those types of things you can use and you can apply a look to any other other look. So if you get a piece of gear, you put it on, like you the look like that, trans you can change it to look like whatever you nice. want. Nice. That's so cool. And, and it, like you just you can just put some ability to this sweater, but then you can just swap yeah. that ability. Yep. And the uh, appearances you can edit whenever you want in the gear screen. The loom is specifically about applying uh, traits and and applying uh, larger upgrades that just kind of grant you greater statistical like right there decreased damage from really taking from trolls abilities that, on that one. blend in nicely with where you're trying to go with your combat fantasy decreased damage taken from spiders like from inferi i'm just like i'm just seeing that, that they're just like pumpkin fur moon cup fur what what is that come <laughs> from yeah and so you'll notice that the ingredients that are used to add traits uh, and to upgrade your gear uh, are based around beasts so this is where we get into the beast care uh, section, which is inside oh this. Oh my gosh, Mario, here we go. Kind of bigger space on the inside idea. And so you can see here we have a couple of beasts. What? Now. We have a grap horn and a moon calf <laughs> and a niffler uh, and a kneesel. Dude, that grap well. horn is so huge. Up close. <laughs> oh He's just like a big puppy. <laughs> they're I so love their cuddling. <laughs> oh my god, they're together. Oh, that's so cute. They are adorable. And so part of beast care uh, is petting them. As well, but feeding them. Petting too. them. There so you go. So once you do those things, that's petting when they feel confirmed. safe. And they can, they'll give you their their magical ingredients. Oh, so moon calf fur. Feeding a little moon calf. Um, Niffler fur, etc. Uh, that can then be used in your in your gear. That is like so like intuitive because like you know that makes sense because when you touch the animals, you get some fur mm -hmm. leftovers. That's so. Oh my God. Yeah, and we really want to hammer home the fact that this is like a home that you're making for them. So, in the overland, you can find these beast dens uh, and rescue these beasts. Part of doing so is brushing them and feeding oh, they them. Cut, they cut <laughs> something well, she said right there. Uh, to build that relationship with, with your beast. In addition to be able to care for beasts, you can actually. Oh, uh, I can't wait to watch this 4K. As well. uh, the house, the cottage. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> And so we have like a lot of little, little ornaments right uh, in there. this area. And a lot of them are purely cosmetic, but they look really cool. Again, it's the personalization uh, of this space. Oh, that's oh so fun. Oh my goodness, no, this is like- That's so like fun. Eight hours just <laughs> designing this whole Dude, area. people are gonna spend so because much time like, just like, inside these little, things. Like you've got like the room of requirement and then within the room of requirement, <laughs> 
just for the There's multiple vivariums. Yeah, I'm pretty no, sure there's totally. multiple ones. And there's like a decoration aspect, but there's also, we, we were saying inside uh, as well, is there's a utility, uh, utility aspect to it oh. too. So as you uh, progress in the game and you're able to purchase more conjurations, you're able to speed up your process. So one of them, for example, is the food processor, which uh, allows... Dude, it's like a care of magical creatures sim so within Hogwarts Legacy. Like, uh, and so you're, you're really building the progression for yourself here. Um, in addition, there's also a toy box where you, oh, can, <laughs> where you can play with your beasts. You'll see here. Yeah. Oh so my you can, um, God. There's a bunch of toys in it. Elwin's uh, going to love their this. Own favorite toy. So as you can imagine, Elwin's a dog trainer, really you guys. Uh, Elwin is like little, losing like her mind right now. Really Guaranteed. Well. Right. Guaranteed. <laughs> and they're super cute. <laughs> oh my God. I'm watching them. It's so oh, cute. there he comes. There he comes. <laughs> And the big thing we really want to hammer there home you go. Uh, is you that the world is a dangerous place. And so by going and rescuing these beasts and bringing ba them back here uh, and caring for them, you're really helping helping them out. There's poachers in the overland uh, who want to who hunt these beasts for their material. So instead, you're you're caring for them. You're giving them a home. Right. Oh my God, this raptor is just ginormous. Yeah, I know he's huge, right? <laughs> but looks way looks bigger like than the ones we've seen so far. Right now, for sure. <laughs> Oh, you could actually name them as well. Release magical so, like, materials. Dog. You can name them. So getting back into that personalization. Mm -hmm. you they know, confirmed yeah, we, it. We didn't want you to just. We like, were throw asking in, about this last oh, night here's a, here's a on stream. Here. Like, this oh, can be named yes. whatever Andrew's about to name them. Let's see, Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. The good name. Hello, Bruce. Uh, you know, we, we've we've created this really nice space, and and uh, you you can get additional vivariums, correct? Uh, it's a different kind of. Aesthetics there we go. I knew it had to be more than one. You're keeping yeah. your beasts and caring for them. Progression is a big part of this space as well. So, as you progress through the story, all uh, this you is will unlock more customizable. So, as you can see, this one's quite meadow themed, um, big, open, bright. Uh, but there's other ones, say like a swamp that you might encounter, um, and it's really a visual effect to uh, and more space for where you're. Large going. tree. Oh, so it's like those. So when we're inside the room requirement, there's like a right, left, right. There's that moon glow from this one young tree is well on its way to becoming a grand right. old oak it yep, said on the exactly right it. ah oh you put trees in here too oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> and and another thing with the the ben is losing is, his mind is great uh, as we are now to the same kind of thing that you did with like the broom where the broom is not just a, a method of travel it's pokemon and harry potter and integrated into the world <laughs> In the same way, like beast care isn't just this. This I told you guys, like it on top. There's really this like narrative. And yes, integration to. They didn't include a lot of little mini games, so but this this kind of stuff right here makes up for that. I feel like. Um, as you earn resources, you'll go into Hogsmeade and and use them to uh, unlock the game right here stone. And, and unlock new conjurations and statue. To play around with in the open world. Uh, it's in those different. Um, in those different environments, like the different combat and conflicts and bandit camps and different things like that that exist in the Overland, those things are what hold recipes uh, that exist in the loom. Oh my goodness, so I love all that. All these things have a way of connecting. Um, Moonstone that you find out in the world is the resource. Like, how big is this space? That's like, like where? The world. Obviously, there are physical um, limitations at some point. So, really, everything like, how, like how a, big can you like make this area? It keeps you coming back. But even with the story that's being told, too, I, you know, I think people know who Poppy is and, and uh, that she has no particular no. who is she, for Chandler? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think <laughs> everything we're seeing here, you know, you're going to be venturing out into the world uh and and this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg even even of kind of like your interaction excuse me so you know you bring up he said this is the tip of the iceberg more, there are more uh kind of mysteries to discover and things to discover on the world that have to do with her and that have to do with caring for beasts and so different characters have no i told you stuff, dude uh, i told uh, you that that just kind of make this all just kind of like the beginning the, be the beginning of your journey well, we could spend hours in here, but we're yes, we to could. End let's stream now. Let's what just go ahead. About what you've seen today. I mean, this is. I'm just so blown away by how how beautiful it looks. The open world seems so detailed, and there's so many things to do. And like the combat, we're gonna have. We're gonna spend like two weeks or more just breaking it down by pieces. There's just so much to this world like i'm so <laughs> happy you guys did oh, this oh ben he's like I, 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 I don't know what to say that's just the tip of the iceberg we've got more for you to discover and find on your own oh we, oh you, you know so much yeah. for being we're, here we're gonna be thank busy you for watching 
Hogwarts Legacy is available for pre-order We're going to be busy. It releases February 10th with 72-hour early access for owners of the Collector's Deluxe and Digital Deluxe Edition. We're going to wrap things up, but... Not on uh, last gen, guys. Bye. Little surprise? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Another preview of, of what's to come. All right, we got a slither in here. Use. Okay. Wait. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? What was that all about? Okay, hold on. We can rewind it now. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. So where, where are they? Is this a Slytherin common room or is this the library? Okay, they walk up to a book here. It says use. Then we get like this little cutscene. The book. What is happening here? Oh, dude, we can get it. There was a, there was a brief. That looks like the book. Um. Oh, the with with I mean with Merlin and Morgana and all that 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 James has been talking about. And then the character just gets sucked up into the book. What in the world? Port key. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. Wow. I mean, <laughs> what do you guys think? 10 out of 10, dude. I'm like, okay. Gifted 10 members? Martin gifted 10 expensive gold memberships. Oh my god. I, I gotta see what James is. I gotta comment here. Let's see what James is saying, dude. Um, He's probably not going to see my ooh, comment. Professor Drew! Morgana's Horcrux? <gasps> oh my gosh, what was that? Morgana's Horcrux? Wait, gotta, it it I did... It? Is it I was, I was kind of getting like Tom Riddle vibes. Like Tom Riddle Diary vibes, you know? Version yet. He's still giving her the 4K, too. That's what I was Yo, about to check. I'm just going to go back. That's... <laughs> I'm just going to go back. Oh, man. Uh, that's what we just did, dude. In here. You can't end... <laughs> oh, man. I'll have to catch up with James later. This is too good. All right. Let's see if they got the 4K. 4K is up. 4K is up, you guys. All right. 4K version is up. Actually, before I do that, though, hold on. Let me turn my alerts back on, you guys. I see it. I see it. Leisure Knot with the $10 super chat. Leisure Knot, thank you so much for your support and the super chat. I mean, I feel like that was 10 out of 10, guys. Like, 10 out of 10 showing. That was just more, way more than I expected. I mean, even though they only co they covered what they said they were going to be covering, and yet somehow it was... Wow. Wow. All right, let me uh, refresh this, hit save right here. And then we're going to turn the... All right, let me... Uh, I'm going to have to leave this screen for a second. And then we'll come back in, and it should refresh all of that. All right, there we go. Chat's rolling. And we've got the names going at the bottom. I can't I can't even word. Right? Okay. Where do we even begin, dude? Hello. Where do we even Welcome begin? To Gryffindor. Peyton, thank you so much for renewing your membership. And also Leisure Knot with the ten dollar super chat. Noob with another super chat. We got kidnapped by a book and the curses look and sound beautiful. Thank you for the super chat, noob. Dylan with the super chat. Back to work for me. Had fun. I'm so excited. 54 days. Dylan, dude, I'm glad you're able to be here, man. I am just, I am blown away as well, you guys. I am, uh, okay. 
first off, <laughs> first off, I don't even know where to begin. How about that for a first off? Okay, let's talk about, I feel like the part that I was most curious about, this right here, man. Let's, th this is what everybody will want to see, is the AK. Is the AK. That's what everybody will want to see. Uh, Elwin with the super chat had tears when we got to... I knew you would love that part, Elwin. I knew it. I mean, they confirmed we can name them. They confirmed that we can... Uh, we didn't get any confirmation on breeding. Again, guys, uh, we try to keep things spoiler-free. So if you can, don't mention the trophies. But we've seen... we can, You know, what they showed there, we do see like the male-female icons that were at the top as they were interacting with each beast. So it would lead you to believe there is some sort of, you know, th there's a reason for that, right? So is there going to be some type of breeding? We saw, we've seen babies. Maybe, maybe, we will see. All right, so I want to go back to this, like right when they get into the... Uh... To those. And each of the combat areas... Oh my gosh, it looks so much so better in the 4K version. Oh. All right, let's go on inside here. All right, I want to get it back to where they use AK right, right at the jump. Noob with another super chat. We saw it. There's a breeding pin. Did they actually show it? Did they show a breeding pin? Well, there you go. Let's go. I mean, dude, they know what the audience wants. Let me tell you that. Start talking about, uh, we got a human a human character right here, Ashwinder Scout, level 18. Oh, How are you? And uh, yeah, I mean, if you were wondering about, can we AK humans? Because we only saw it on the um, we saw it on the Goblin the very first time, and then we saw it in the uh, on the Troll right here at the jump. You're on the this this little unsuspecting, right. <laughs> boom, AK. <laughs> Crucio. Oh my okay, now this is what. Oh, see, this is. Oh, this is when we get to get to start breaking it down. Blue Moon renewing their subscription as well. Blue Moon, thank you so much. Welcome uh, as you continue to be a member of House Wreck and Tour here. Peyton, hey, Peyton, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. All right, I'm so glad to share this moment with all of you. Wolfie, right? That was just epic. That was epic. The green X giving me Riddler vibes from Batman. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. So this is what they were saying about the the curses. Remember when they revealed Imperio and it had it had that information about uh, giving them the cursed effect or whatever. So they said that is what this X means. So let's talk about Crucio here. I mean, Avada Kedavra crazy, but then I'm going to turn volume all the way up here. Listen to this sound. I saw Nico commenting on it during the live stream. Listen to this after they cast Crucio. Hey, oh my god. <laughs> we're, start, we're starting off strong. Oh my god. Is strong. That, is that, was that Crucio? You know, like the, those like, just terrified whispers. It's like, ah. Oh my god. That's so you can cool. still hear it a little strong. bit there. Oh my god. Is that, is that, was that Crucio? Oh, it's so creepy. You guys are going to love it. We're starting off strong. Oh my god. Okay, so it doesn't do a lot of damage. Look at that. This is Crucio. So AK obviously immediately depletes the meter. Alan talked about how they wanted to make sure that was true to the book. So even on the, the troll that had the huge amount of XP, uh, there was a lot of us wondering, like, how is that going to work? You know, how are they going to balance that? AK, just like the book, it's instant, fully depleted, whether you're a mountain troll, human, goblin, whatever. And that's what we just saw that saw there. Now, Crucio, on the other hand, let's let's take a look right here. Oh my God. <laughs> See, Crucio did uh, looks like forty one damage. However, it gives them the cursed status effect right here. Now, let's see if it strong. keeps ticking. Oh it does. Okay, yeah, we saw it. We saw just a glimpse of it. So Crucio is going to keep ticking down. Watch it right there. So it, it drops down again. So Crucio, that's going to be like a damage over time thing. Looks like it ticks for 48 right there. Now, Imperio is another spell that we know can also apply this um, curse status effect. So what they were saying, and they were talking about dark fantasies, who knows how many spells are going to have this capability, right? We know for sure Crucio now, because we see it right here, we know for sure Imperio. Are there going to be any others? that have this, that can apply this cursed effect here. Because theoretically what you could have, depending on however many spells and how fast your meter can refill, I mean, what they were saying, 
that dark fantasy power trip is you could curse like five or six enemies, right? And then they start to share damage. They share damage. And then once you have all these enemies sharing damage, curse another one and then cast AK on it and they all drop at the same time. They all drop at the same time. That is insane. So see, you start getting that little X effect right there and then they cast Imperio. So Imperio on that one, note the change in the eyes right there. We see the eyes change to get kind of this blue and also this sort of, I don't know, greenish smoke, but also the little green X to denote that, hey, they are currently cursed. So this enemy here, and then the one we just saw before that, they are they are now sharing damage. Not yet, not yet, but right now. Now they're sharing damage. Oh, dude, you hear the guy screaming too? You hear the guy screaming over on the right? Oh my goodness. You hear him screaming? James thinks the book we got is the collector's edition. Oh, could be. Could be. In a way, like when we used Avada Kedavra, that guy's health bar went from instant to zero. And we really are trying. Oh, and see, look, he immediately starts fighting for us. So that guy, this poor dude over here, this guy's got Crucio on him. We Imperio this guy, and then he starts attacking the dude that's Crucio. Oh my goodness. Now see, now if they could also put a curse on this guy here and then start casting damaging spells on him, that would apply to all of the others. That would apply to all of the others. Mod that terms all screams into the Will Wilhelm scream. This looks dark for real, right? Portkey also travels with you. Oh, so did they not... Did they actually just get absorbed into the book? I mean, I was definitely getting vibes of, um, definitely getting vibes of Tom Riddle's diary. Okay, so yeah, you, so so it stays there to their point right there about the, the port key deal. All right, so combat, all right, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna, I gotta put up a poll here. I gotta start a poll. Favorite part of the showcase. All right, so option one, we're going to say broom flight slash exploration. Option two, we're going to say advanced combat. Option three, we're going to say room of requirement. I got a feeling I know how this is going to go. <laughs> oh, I'm going to make it harder on you guys, though. I'm going to make it harder. I'm going to also add as a fourth option vivarium to nurture beasts i'm gonna make it not so easy for you all right so favorite part of the showcase broom flight exploration that's one advanced combat two room of requirement three or four vivarium to nurture beasts boom all right vote in the poll guys let me know what you think let me know what you think uh, if you haven't already make sure to leave a like on this video if you've enjoyed hanging out with us today uh, that's going to help more people find the stream. Everything was so good. Nico, for real, dude, for real. Like, I am, uh, I usually try and be pretty, what's the word? Not critical, but fair. You know, I want to be fair. I want to talk about the good, talk about the bad. Um, my initial gut reaction without going through and looking at everything in super fine detail, I mean, this this was 10 out of 10 for me. 10 out of 10. I thought what they showed was, in, was incredible. Just incredible. All right, let's just, uh, we can talk. For, I want to talk with you guys for a bit. I mean, I want to get in here and break down, but I want to I want to see what you guys are saying too. So I'm just going to let this play here. Let's actually, let's get some music going in the background. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to let this exploration bit play here. Now that we've got it in 4K. Oh my good, look at this. Look at this. You can talk about spells again. So pretty sure that's Incendio on the right. I think that's our first time seeing the icon for that one. Agreed, 10 out of 10. Elwin, I love my beasts, but flight, dude, it's amazing. Alicia, favorite part was the moon calf. Where's the all option? Nah, go ninja. I'm not, <laughs> option five, yes, blue moon says. No, no, I'm gonna force you guys to pick. Force you guys to pick. All right. So we got actually okay i'm a little bit surprised but it, i think it's because i made it hard on you guys top top of our list right now we've got 170 votes in the poll 30 percent said broom flight exploration uh 27 saying room of requirement 24 saying advanced combat 19 saying the vivarium to nurture beasts and it is rapidly changing as the votes come in 
rapidly changing as the votes come in. Oh my gosh. See, this is what I wanted to see, dude. This is what I wanted to see. All this in the glorious 4K resolution. It looks so much better now. Right there, the hopping onto the broom. Hey, Brandon. Welcome. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Also, uh, Surface Magician subscribing. Thank you for subscribing You're to the channel. Wizard. And then, Ingeny. Sorry, I'm, I'm definitely mispronouncing that. Injun Y L R M. Thank you for subscribing You're as a well. Wizard, Harry. Uh, Casey with another super chat. Casey said you should have put an all. I, everybody, it would have been 100% all. It would have been 100% all. We got we to gotta make it a little bit difficult for you guys, you know? Casey, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's see what else we got here. Larry the Cable Man, dude, you missed so much. What are, what are you talking about, Larry? You talking about in the trailer? Are you talking about donations or chats? <laughs> Sunny Law, love your channel. Keeps me sane till the game comes out. Hey, thank you, Sunny Law. Thank you for the support as well. Combat for real looks so fun. That was our best look yet. I think we're going to be able to make some pretty advanced videos now, breaking down all the combat. So what I think is super interesting as they're flying around here, all of these little challenges that kept popping up. So I guess that's kind of like an area thing, like based on the location you're in. And then all these random NPC. Oh, dude, wait, wait, wait. There's a sign right up here, right here. Oh, yes. You know we got to zoom in on this. Okay, we've got Hogwarts and Lower Hogsmeade here to the right. Can definitely read those two. This one, I cannot read at all. Ooh, this side's what I really want to know, though. This side's what I really want to know. Let's see. What just popped in there? Wait, we had Elwin with the super chat. Did I miss Elwin? James confirmed it with proof. Book in the clip is the book in the collector's edition. <laughs> He's about to cry. <laughs> oh, you love to see it. You love to see it. And then also right on the back of Elwin's uh, donation there, we had Leisure Knot with another super chat. Going to spend a lot of time customizing my room of requirement and Vivarium, right? Dude, people are going to spend so much time just customizing those two areas that's the kind of thing when they first showed that in the in the state of play when they first showed that i never expected something like that and then i i had a feeling i was like okay i think this is going to be a lot deeper than than people are thinking what does this say right here k e e is this an actual village name near Hogwarts you guys let me know if it is still nothing on Dementors yeah Luna Comics still haven't seen anything on Dementors memories from the past uh, Jay Rossi said I did hear a gentleman saying going through your year uh, Wolfie with a super chat as well this absolutely blew my mind right Wolfie I'm right there with you right there with you thank you guys for the super chats thank you by the way what was my favorite part i see sunny i was hoping people would wait a second before confronting me with it oh man like it's hard for me if i had to pick one if i had to pick one obviously i, I like all of them just like you guys but if i had to pick one i almost it's, it's between exploration and the combat. I think I'm going to go exploration, actually. I think I'm gonna, I would say exploration if I had to pick just one. Blue Moon picked Broom Flight because of what we saw opened my eyes to the extensive scope of this game. 100% Blue Moon. Uh, other topics were partly expected, but also even more mind-blowing at the same time. Crazy good show tease, right? It was a crazy tease. Uh, Christopher, what is crazy is the level of customization in those areas. Yes! Like... They could have they could have just stopped with like, oh, this is an area where you can nurture beasts, or this is the area where you brew potions, and this is set. Like, that's what I thought. The first time we went into that You're room of requirement, it's like, oh, all of this is how it's gonna be. But no! You can customize all of it. 
You can customize it. Not just like, oh, a few furniture items. You can customize the actual roof above your head, the window, the color. Who knows what else that they didn't show? They said this, they said multiple times that this is like scratching the surface. Are you kidding me right now? I think this sign down here at the bottom, by the way, says something about trolls. Caution trolls in whatever this area is. Uh, Zoro's Wolf of Death. Yo, thank you for the super chat, Zoro. Retro, please join me in the dark side. Dark magic has <laughs> so many more perks than being the good guy. Right, they haven't showed us much about, about being the good guy yet. Alan started to touch on it. He started to touch on it. And then they cut him off. They didn't let him. <laughs> Come on, show us. If we, if we choose not to go to the dark side, you know, what are we going to have at our disposal? What are we going to have? Because, I mean, I can't lie with what Zoro's saying here. The dark side's looking pretty fun right now. It's looking pretty fun. Now, they, they did also say that that whole arena, I, I guess, I don't know if that's any arena or if it's just the dark arts battle arena. I, I would assume it would just be the dark arts because that's why it's named dark arts battle arena. Even if you don't choose to learn those spells, like if you want to play as like the good playthrough or whatever, you can go in there just to experiment with them, play around, have fun. So I love that they're doing that. That's a great option to have for those of us who are like, I want to stay true to the good, at least on my first playthrough, right? Stay true to the good. Free Alan. Yes, free Alan. Let Alan just talk with us for hours on end. Professor Drew, what is up? I know it's supposed to be OP. Shouldn't the AK curse be dodgeable by enemies? Seems like the cutscene makes it a guarantee. Ooh, I wonder, like, is... Yeah, is that a cutscene, or is there a way for them to kind of dodge out of the way? It does look like it kind of shifts into a cutscene there when you pull back to cast it. That's a good question. I don't know. But yeah, you feel like they should at least be able to hop out of the way. Now, see what I love about this scene right here? Like, look at this. Uh, we got a locked door. Another locked door over here. And then we have this this kid just kind of riding around on a pretend broom. I love it. And then we've got, again, some more signage. Brock Burrow this way. Lower Hogsmeade this way. And then they gave us a look right there. Oh, Aaron, Aaron Shire. Hogsmeade. And then this one says Graveyard. And then... S Iron, iron something on that one. And then danger. Danger. Oh, we don't get to see. Danger boo? <laughs> Looks like it says danger and then starts with a B. Horizon Zero Dawn vibes with the atmosphere walking around. I could see that. Uh, Zoro says, all right, I have to go. Sorry, Retro. Hey, Zoro. All good. Appreciate you stopping by and hanging out. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Appreciate your, your support and the super chat. By the way, guys, this VOD will stay up. I know a lot of people are like taking breaks at work and stuff. So this this will stay live on the channel. You guys can go back and, re and rewatch anytime. Anything that you missed, let me know in the comments below. Replay squad if you go back and watch. But um, for those of you who have to bounce out and leave, thank you so much for being here. Um, we're going to keep breaking it down here for a little bit longer here. But yeah, they don't really give us a, a great look at the... Uh, that last sign right there. Danger something, I can see. <clears throat> Invincibility frames. Uh, hold on. I want to make sure I don't miss that. No way we're either getting damage nor the enemy is escaping. So, like, we're invincible. I see what you mean. It could be. I could see that. Maybe some powerful enemies will be able to dodge or something like that. I mean, the way Alan talked, it seems like the way they're balancing AK is with the... Um, with the cooldown. Now, we also don't know, like, they were talking about potions. I, I'm going to have to rewatch. We only watched it one time, but they were talking about potions there and other things that you can use to, like, I think it was combos also speed up how quick you get it back. Now, we also don't know if it's different in the Dark Arts Battle Arena. Like, maybe it, it recharges faster there. Did they say the Patronus Charm will not be in the game? They have not said it will not be in the game. They haven't said. They have not said anything about the Patronus. The reason that people started speculating is because... Uh, oh, wait. Now, that chair right there, that is showing... 
Oh, but I wonder if that's interact like for an object for a pugno. I wonder, I wonder. All right, they walk over here to the chair because I know people are going to be asking, can you not sit at the bar? Can you not sit down at the table? Yeah, it doesn't look like any interact pops up. Now there is, oh, the chairs are still clearly, this chair was highlighted and then this one got highlighted. So maybe you can go sit over here because they clearly walk over here, take a drink. And then there's an interact right there on the middle of the table, but I think it might be for that. Yeah, it's for the object. It's for the mug right there. Yeah, so the, the only reason people started speculating about the Patronus is because when they confirmed that you can link your Wizarding World account, they didn't say Patronus. So that's why a lot of people were like, ah. Professor Drew Retro, you should be the host of the third showcase. I mean, we'll see if there is a third, right? I kind of feel like I would have already been contacted by now, but who knows? Who knows? Let's see. Uh, Umbra, I missed everything. Oh, don't you worry. Don't you worry, Umbra. We're going to have a lot of uh, breakdown videos for sure. Live and replay squad for Nico. Let's go. Elwin literally going to be spending all day watching the live streams. I know, right? I got to go back. I want to see I want to see everybody's reactions to uh, all the random moments. There were so many moments in this one. So many moments of epicness. Wonder what the screen shows if we die. Oh, wait, hold on. Speaking of moments of epicness, dude, let's just appreciate this. I said it in the live stream. I'll say it again. Avalanche, whoever's idea it was to have this little bag right here. Okay, now wait. We don't see... We're going to have to start trying to figure out which button does this. Which button summons our mount? Whoever's idea it was to have the mount be like this needs a raise. Give this person a raise. Watch this, you guys. Watch this. Are you kidding me? That is just so epic right there. Elwin with another super chat. We have over 550 people here watching. Let's go, guys. Thank you for the love and support for being here today. If you can, please like the video stream. Show your love. Thank you, Elwin, for the super chat. And thank you, guys, man. So many people for being here, hanging out, even after the showcase. Uh, but yeah, if you do have the time, if you're enjoying the stream, make sure to leave a like. It helps more people find the video um, so we can get more people uh, in here excited about this game. I got to watch this again, dude. So good. Oh, I didn't even catch this on the first viewing. The goats over here. Now, they talked about how you can... Um, it seems like with the Hippogriff, you could just run along on the ground for a bit. Oh, wait, maybe is you think right on the D-pad could be summon? Or it might be just be dismount. How would a Boggart work in the game if it's in the game? I have no idea. Unless, I, I think if a Boggart was in the game, they'd have to base it around like our character's backstory. It'd have to be related to something in our, in our past. Karthik Retro on the third showcase. I'm screaming my lungs. Thank you, Karthik. We'll see. We'll see. Attention to detail is so crazy. Everything has a different animation. I mean, this right... Everything they showed here was awesome today, but this alone, like just seeing all this stuff that we're going to be able to explore, all the stuff that keeps popping up, all the little markers on the map. Oh, I did want to pause it during the live stream to look at this. The tool wheel, L1, is useful for dealing with higher level combat situations. Combat plants and potions can give you an advantage against tougher enemies. Okay, so I thought it was going to have something to do with the flight right here. Dylan, do you think we can swim? I keep going back and forth on it, Dylan. I keep going back and forth. We tried to summon it last night <laughs> during our live stream. We tried to make it happen just like we made the jump button happen. A lot of people are asking for swimming. <sighs> some days I feel like yes. Some days I feel like no. Like maybe it's going to be... I just feel like that'd be so much to program like the underwater component, you know? Now maybe they have it like where you can swim but you can't like, like dive deep down, possibly. 
100% on board with Quidditch and Chess being future DLC after s seeing this showcase. Totally okay with their decisions here. Yeah, like, I knew they would have to have some things for... And then I love this little, like, how you can stop and kind of do this hover. Look at all these icons here. We're going to have to figure out what all of these mean. Levitate a dug bog by its tongue. <laughs> all these little challenges that are popping up, dude. Slow a loyalist assassin right there. This is going to be one of those games that everyone plays forever. Oh, I hope so, man. I hope we can just sink hours and hours and hours into this. Uh, Christopher, if you were worried they would show too much of the game in these streams, I think we now see just how much there will be to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, for this, I love I love seeing stuff like this. I know some people don't, and, you know, that's your, that's your choice, right? If you don't want to watch them, fine, right? You don't have to. But... I think, I mean, Chandler said, I've seen him replying to people on Twitter. They're being very careful about what they're showing. The only stuff I care about not seeing is, uh, like, like story stuff. Dude, I didn't even catch on the live stream. It started to rain a little bit right there. I don't know if it's because they're just going through that area or what, but it definitely started to rain. Yeah, it seems like that's a certain area on the map that is not, uh, not too pleasant. No way there's going to be all three Unforgivables, but not the Patronus Charm. Right, Kitty? Right? Especially if you're going to have Dementors, we have to have a way of combating those Dementors. We have to. Patronus Charm, make it happen. I feel like Patronus Charm is in. Like, maybe it's something that um so that happens toward the end. I don't know. Pokemon meets Wizarding World, right? Uh, so we saw Dementors in the first trailer for the game in a cutscene. I love this part. <laughs> this is funny. The dev dev commands, and then we and then Dementors are on the deluxe box art, which which to me, think they have to be in, right? They have to be in at some point. After what I'm seeing, I don't doubt 150 Patronus wouldn't be that hard, especially when most are Muggle animals. Are others others already have model creatures in the game? Just add bluish transparency. It, true, true. Clearly, they've had to program a lot of animations because that was one of my sort of reservations about bringing it over from the Wizarding World is I thought it would probably be too much um, programming work like for all the different animations on there. But to your point there, maybe they already have a lot of them because of what they've done here. <clears throat> Tom, Retro, would just trying to sneak out some Hogwarts objects from the shelves there. Oh, I must be behind. Tyler! Yo, Tyler with a super chat. Tyler, thank you so much for your support of the stream and the super chat there. I didn't see any question. Um, so hopefully you didn't have a question there. If you do, just post it in the chat and I'll, I'll try to catch it there. Hippogriff shiny, right? Goat animal, therefore easy. Goat Patronus. Uh, road not taken. I'd say it'll definitely support both controller options. Dude, wait. Hold on. There was like a bonfire back here. I'm going to... I mean, we're going to keep catching stuff as we... I'm pretty sure they fly over some wolves or something right here. Wait, what is... What is that? They cut away. You can sort of see our little... Uh, it kind of like locks on. I hope you can disable that. Hope you can disable that little HUD element. Maybe that's for like the story mode. What was that? I'm pretty sure we see wolves a little bit later. But then right there, there's like this bonfire right here in this little, I don't know, this little shack. Oh, wait, this could be a, look at that, the little skull symbol right there. That could be like an area that we need to, um, I don't know, what's, what's the right word? <laughs> Free that area or whatever. Reveal the L1 use, potions use, right, right. They went close to the to the water with the hippogriff, but didn't touch it. Still need to confirm swim and sit. Maybe get a mount that can swim. I like that. This game looks like Red Dead 2. I wasn't going to say it, but I thought the same thing, Curse Black. I definitely had a little bit of a Red Dead vibe when they, when they went outside there. Do you think you can have your mount as your pet? Hmm, what do you mean by that, Marcus? Like, could you get the mount in the Vivarium area? It's an interesting question. 
I'm not sure about that. Like, are the... Oh, yeah. Like, are the mounts that emerge from our little bag... Can you also, like, take them out in the vivarium and play fetch with them and all that? Feed them? Care for them? Aren't there spells to breathe underwater? Uh, right. There's gillyweed. Yeah, yeah. Swim could be like the old Assassin's Creed games. Only surface level swimming. Just holding breath underwater. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, Amanda. They did confirm holidays and changing of decorations like within Hogsmeade as well as uh, in the castle. Yeah. They said holidays. So I'm thinking... Like, Thanksgiving is just a U.S. thing for the most part. So that one's not... I'm thinking probably Halloween, Christmas. Those are probably the big two. Because I'm trying to think of, like, the big holidays in the books. Something always happens in the books on Halloween. Something always major. Uh, did you catch at some point, Chandler said, through your year at Hogwarts? feel like that confirms just one year. I did not catch that, Rusty. That's a good, that's a great catch. Uh, somebody else mentioned that earlier, I think. I've been saying for a while like one year's kind of my gut. So that that's that's what I'm expecting. New enemy types revealed, the enchantments esque thing. They showed various enemy types. Oh, I'm gonna have to go back and check that out. Uh, I want swimming, merfolk, quidditch, gobstones, wizard chest, romance, pet bat. <laughs> oh my goodness. All of the above for Casey there. Primordial? I don't think so. I don't think they're going to separate the spells like that. I think they're going to separate the spells how Alan talked about in the first showcase with James, with Expecto Go. Uh, they talked about there's combat. There's, um, oh gosh, help me out, chat. Like movement or something, like force-based or something like that. There were three types, and I think he said there are four types, and then he, he listed off three. Like a poacher camp? Yeah, yeah. Kelpie mount? Oh, that would be cool. Lucas says we will be able to swim for sure. Army of Nipplers. Ghost of Tsushima Vigil. Yeah, I can see the inspiration of that one as well. We reported on that a while back. Oh, here's another. Uh, interrupt a charging mongrel with Depulso. I mean, to Alan's point, that's got to be a Merlin thing, right? Yeah, that's one of Merlin's, which we saw. So this icon right here. This little leaf. Merlin's puzzles. Merlin's puzzles for the little leaf right there. Yeah, that's a good question, Nico. Like, can we ride the Graphorn and then have it in the room of requirement? Yeah. Can we just become an anim Animagus at this point? Animagus, Animagus. I still prefer uh, Animagus, but... I, I, I hesitate to say no to anything at this point. I really do. I really hesitate to say no to anything. Like, my gut instinct is probably no, but who the heck knows? Who the heck knows after seeing what all they included there in the Bavariums and in the Room of Requirement? Yeah, the, the Whomping Willow from the Potter series wouldn't be here. It wasn't planted yet. Uh, however, there could be other Whomping Willows. I made a whole video about that, gosh, probably over a year ago now. There's a lot of confusion on that. People thought, just saw my thumbnail and thought I had it wrong. I'm like, no, no, watch the video. So Whomping Willow, yes, we that read the books think of it as the Whomping Willow, but it, it's just it's just a type of plant in the wizarding world. So there could be others, and there could be some here long before Harry Potter's day, for sure. All right, so here they're making their way into the Dark Arts Battle Arena, which, let's hold on. We got to go back and let's get a look at the Thestral Mount animation. Right here. This is, this is like, seriously one of my favorite things. Oh, my gosh. So good. So good. We already know you can do that with a grab horn as well. They showed that at the event in Brazil. Kitty, a giant moon cap is my Patronus. <gasps> Bet you could turn into an Animagus. Uh, you'd need to do the actual procedure. Fail endless times until you get it right. If there is Merlin, will there be Morgana? 
people ask me about the Merlin stuff too. Like, expect to go is definitely the, uh, at least that's where I heard it first of all the Merlin theories. So I'll defer to him on that. I, I still lean more toward Merlin being like a side thing and possibly not as key to the story. Or if it is, it's like just some sort of historical reference. Oh, let's read this right here. I'm going to stop this here. Fight waves of enemies in this battle arena with the unforgivable curse. Okay, so that's what the Dark Arts battle arena. Which this one, I think, is a deluxe only thing. They confirm there's going to be three total battle arenas. Two that everyone will get, regardless of which version. Then the Dark Arts battle arena is only for the... Um, the the deluxe pre-orders leisure not with another super chat let's go leisure not thank you for all your support today appreciate it my friend in one of the clips from ccxp the character summoned a grab horn and used it to run into enemies yes yes exactly they summoned a grab horn just like we saw there with the uh thestral and then basically just like charged over these goblins and that looked like it was like out in the overworld area instead it was crazy crazy Fourth type of spells confirmed, right? Green is curses. You might be right, yes, because green, they are a different color in here. Right there, actually, hold on, that's more than four. We see this sort of dark green here, so that's one. The red is two, the purple is three. Then there's this lighter green. So that'd be five. Maybe the Unforgivables have their... So wait, these lighter spells are definitely the Unforgivables. That's the three Unforgivables right there. You're a wizard, Harry. We see those here in a second. Henry! Henry, thank you for subscribing to the channel. When they morph the bench, I thought, I, I thought the same thing, Gabe. I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. Noob, what's up? Noob with another super chat. Retro, I did it. Check Discord. <laughs> Noob, I don't have I don't even have Discord loaded right now. Too much too much to break down, Noob. Too much to break down right now. Just immediately into the AK. Just immediately. Yeah, I I thought for sure they were gonna sit down earlier too. The dark green. Okay, wait. Welcome to Gryffindor. The dark green are the unforgivables, you think. Okay, hold on. So let's get it get a good look right there. That's the coloration of the unforgivables here and then we go back here to this blurred out uh, screen they do look yeah because there's only three of those but there's only three of the lighter ones too i think you're right though this green definitely matches more with and they this is how they have it set up once they get in here it's these three and then this one on the left which, which they confirmed as confringo Kitty, hey, Kitty, thank you so much for becoming a member here. Welcome. You are now a member of House Reconteur. You can use the emotes in the chat. Yeah, so see right here. I think you're right. I think it's the darker green. So darker green is for... So maybe the Unforgivables have their own category. When Alan was talking about the category of spells... Maybe the Unforgivables have different strengths depending on which option you choose. Uh, Draco, not just deluxe pre-orders, you can buy the Dark Art. Right, good. that's a good point, Draco. Yeah, even if you bought the standard version, um, you do have the option of, of purchasing the upgrade to include it. So don't worry. If you see it, see people playing it online or something, and you decide you want it, you will have the option afterwards. You will have the option. Good point, Draco. Thank you for bringing that up. Professor Drew, so the unforgivable curses are not allowed in the other arenas. That makes sense. I wonder how much control there is in the in using it in the open world. Yeah, so my guess, Drew, on the um, like I think this dark arts arena. Actually, that's a good point. Do we know that like does that confirm you can't use them? I don't think it confirms that you can't. However, what Alan did talk about is is he talked about how if you don't want to go down like the dark arts path or whatever that this is kind of a way for players to come in and experiment with those spells. I think, even if you don't learn them in-game, I think that's what he said. 
We'll have to do our full breakdown later, but I think that's what he said. So then to your point, I could see the other battle arenas. Like, you see games do this a lot where they have these little challenges, and so when you're doing these challenges, you have to only use one type of weapon or, you know, a couple different types of weapons or you have to eliminate enemies in a certain way or... So with the Dark Arts when it's like all about the Unforgivables. So yeah, I could see the other arenas being based around something else. Noob with another super chat, Noob. Thank you so much for the support, Noob. Light green healing or support spells. Could be, could be. He's Because Alan stopped just short of explaining it in the first gameplay showcase. I'm pretty sure he only listed off three and they're all, they're not coming to my mind right now, but he mentioned combat. So that means that that um that AK, Crucio, and Imperio are not in the combat category. They have their own category for the unforgivables. Alright, so let's go back in here. Let's jump back in to this section right here. Which we watched a little bit more earlier. So we know R1's gonna be for a pugno there. <clears throat> Six types of spells? Wait, did I just completely miscount? <laughs> did I completely miscount again, Cole? All right, so we got the red, that's one. The dark green, two. The light green, three. The purple, four. And the yellow, five. So one, two, three, four. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Okay, Let's, I think it's easier to look at it this way. Yellow is one. Purple is two. Red is three. Light blue is four. The light green is five, and yeah, then the dark green would be six. You're right. Why can I not count today? So yeah, then the unforgivables are in their own category because they're the dark green. Oh, that's super interesting. We're going to have to go through and look at all these too, like see the different things that they're... Uh, Henry, will the game have romance? I don't think so, Henry. I think it'll be more just like, um, just like friendly relationships with with fellow students. I don't think it'll be like going on dates or anything like that. Uh, hold triangle during Protego to stun enemies with a stupefy counterattack. Okay, wait. So I thought. So is it just tap? So is it just tap triangle for Protego? But then if you hold it, if you keep holding it down. You stun enemies with a stupefy counterattack. Interesting. Let's see if we see that happen at any point. Well, there's another Crucio. <laughs> another Crucio on that guy. Oh, man. The combat's going to be so fun. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, the, yeah, you got it, Cole. You got it. Okay, Mary. Mary's uh, breaking them down for us here. Unforgivables, combat, essentials, and control. I do remember him talking about essential spells. That would be things like uh, like the little triangle with the eye here. That was um, Revelio that you that you can have access to at any time. Left on the D pad, Revelio. And we also got confirmation, guys, of how it works between switching out your different categories here. So they've got the, the spells right here. Did you see that? Oh, look at that. Look at that. They just switched to four different spells. So the way, man, I wish I could get this little, this YouTube bar to disappear right here. I'm going to have to let it play. As soon as I move my mouse, I'm pretty sure this reappears. But just watch the bottom right, you guys. Watch the bottom right. You see that? There's the D-pad right there. So you hold R2. And then pressing on the D-pad in a certain direction allows you to switch to a different set of spells very quickly. We were wondering how that would be handled after the last time. Oh, and I want to see how this works right here, too. What, okay. I thought I caught this live. Let's watch that combo meter. The combo meter... Wait, why does it jump up all of a sudden? It's at 12. But it is at kind of this, like, halfway point, so maybe that means you can use it. Because they look over here at that wizard right there, and this L1R1 pops up. Has kind of this blue little silhouette on it. I definitely think that is connected to the combo right here, to the ancient magic. We see that light up, and then we see that spell right there. Yeah, and Alan even... Let's see if this is what he's talking about right here. Because he, he mentioned the ancient magic. 
change the way you play. And I think McKinsey uh, knows a lot about what's going on with the plants yeah. and potions. And so the, the this is what Elwin caught during the stream. Well, they the just kind of, uh, changed the. This is this is not the part where Alan said what I was looking for. But Elwin caught this during the stream. This whatever this ancient magic ability right here is, it transformed this dude into a a chicken. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. Anime King, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Oh my gosh. Wholesome Evil changed my mind. Favorite part of the showcase when they were dancing during the transition, right? Dark Arts Arena is if you want to be a good wizard. Okay, right, right. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Uh, I definitely think so too, Karthik. I think there's more for ancient magic. I mean, in fact, we've seen it with the big lightning strike. Or, or perhaps it, a different one is unlocked if you fill this meter all the way. Because they did this little transfigure. Wait, does this confirm transfiguration in the game? Or is that going to be part of our ancient magic? Oh, <gasps> Maybe Fig is our transfiguration professor and also teaching us ancient magic? I don't know. Don't know. Just throwing out stuff. Just throwing out stuff. That's how these ideas come to me, you guys. That's how they come to me. But yeah, right here, chicken. Can you believe this? <laughs> uh, most likely Doglo, yes, most likely. Probably even the seventh if, they, if they'll allow streams on the seventh for the early access. Wonderful meet any students. Oh, that are an Anna, anime jai. Well, I'm thinking that Sebastian's sister is a maledictus. So that that's not exactly what you're asking there, but Lucas, wonder what difficulty this is. I would say it's on one of the easier difficulties. Either story mode or easy. That's usually how they do these types of things. Usually they don't they don't show off the hardest difficulty. Just like across the board. Hit a troll with its own boulder and defeat an enemy with a venomous tentacula. Okay, we did, I don't think we saw this during the live stream because we had the captions going, enemies of a higher level than you will be harder to defeat. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, Draco, didn't they say you could go... So, Draco, that was my... Oh, I'm, I gotta pull that back up. That was my interpretation, Draco, is that left D-pad that you could change what that spell is but I'm not sure if I was correct in that. So they, to answer your question, they did not outright say that. No, that's kind of what I got from how Alan described it in the showcase number one. But I think I might be incorrect on that. I think I might be. Chicken power like Moody with the ferret. I know, right, dude? More like a rooster. <laughs> Handy chicken if you need a mid-fight uh, snack. Kiddo BP, welcome kiddo. Thank you for being here and hanging out. I bet it tastes like a ferret. Chicken spell a nod to Realm Royale. Uh, Tom, you think they have a different variation of blocks, meaning if you perfectly time it, causes a faster refresh on your other spells? Could be. Could be, yeah. I tried to stop this one, right? Oh, dude, wait, what is this? What is this menu right here? Is this the L1? No, I think because L L1 is what... I feel like L1 is what would use that potion over there on the left. So then what causes this menu right here? What do they press to get that to appear? Yeah, Graphorn has the mount for sure. For sure. Because we saw that in the uh, Brazilian Comic-Con. And it looked awesome, just like the others. Mounts are L1, then D-pad possibly. Uh, Karthik, my point in the AK having invisibility frames when he casts on the first troll. Troll was about to attack. AK was activated and the troll just stopped the attack. Oh, okay. That's not how, how I was taking it. Yeah, I'll have to go back and watch that. That is in, that is really interesting, though, if it's... um. Oh, release L1 to equip. There you go. Thanks, guys. So, yeah, they're holding L1 down to bring this menu up. Yeah, that's kind of... Oh, that makes it even more OP, right? If an enemy's about to attack... You hit AK, you start your animation, and they just, <laughs> they just instantly stop what they're doing. That'd be kind of weird. But again, this could be... We, we don't know about difficulty settings, and we don't know how it will actually 
play in the final game. Yeah, so release to equip. So I wonder if you just, if you tap L1, does it just use it? Holding L1 brings up this, and then you see the right stick here to go around and select. So I know they talked about Wigan Weld Potion. I think that's this one right here. Chinese Chomping Cabbage, release L1 to equip. So if you release L1, that equips it. And then we've got our Mandrake here, Venomous Tentacula here, and a blue potion here. That might be the rock potion they show here in a little bit. And then three that are locked. And then also we see the mounts over here on the right. Dude, I'm just saying there's a fourth space here open. Oh wait, would that be Hippogriff though? Oh man, does this kill our hopes of a dragon? I'm not giving up hope on a dragon mount. Not giving up hope. I'm not giving up hope yet. We were wondering last night next to the map. Yes, exactly, Elwyn. Yes. So I think this pretty much confirms that this, this means you cannot use your mount in this area. This little, like, invalid symbol. So if I have this right, holding L1 will bring up this menu. And so I guess over here, maybe you can change which mount. I bet you could set one mount to a hotkey. Something on the D-pad, maybe. And then if you want to do an, uh, one of the other mounts, you can like hold L1 and go here to select it or change the hotkey. Oh, dude, wait. I want to see what that... I didn't read the description down there at the bottom. Um, so, formidable chomping cabbages that when released attack nearby enemies. Chomping cabbages, cabbage seeds can be purchased at Dogweed and Death Cap. Must be grown in medium or large pots. This game is so deep. This game is so deep. Casey with another super chat. Casey, thank you so much for your support. What if we play as a descendant of Merlet, right? I mean, that's been that's been Expecto Go's big theory for a while. We shall see. Oh, and look at that. They tried to switch away quickly. We're going to go frame by frame here, though. We're going to get back to it. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, troll. There it is. Oh, this one's called a Focus Potion. So they did talk about that one too. That one will reduce the drinker's spell cooldowns. It lasts for 15 seconds. So you get like a 15 second boost, I guess, in how fast your spells are, are cooling down. So Brewing Time. This one takes one minute to brew. It will yield one bottle. You need one Lacewing Fly, one Fluxweed Stem, and one Dugbog Tongue for, for uh, making that one. All right, let's check on the the poll results, guys. We had over 500 votes in the poll. Favorite part of the showcase, the broom, flight, and exploration came out on top at 33%. Advanced combat was right behind it at 26%. And then room of requirement right behind it at 25%. And then vivarium to nurture the beast at 15 I think we could probably add those two together. <laughs> Give us a 40%. So room of requirement overall would have been people's top choice. Oh, man. But, but just seeing that breakdown right there tells you how great everything was that they showed, right? I mean, the fact that people were so hyped about all of that. <clears throat> oh, then you get the little... So I wonder if the red... Oh, it's different color indicators. I wonder if the red means unblockable. They may have confirmed this, and I was just so hyped in the middle that I didn't hear it. Uh, like, I'm playing through God of War right now. And the red, when you see red on the enemy attacks, it means unblockable. So you notice they dodge out of the way on this one. They don't even try Protego. Now that one was a different color, and then they try Protego. Dude, I bet that's totally what it is. Oh, I love this right here. I love this, dude. Watch this. So they cast, they get they get it to cool. Dude, look how fast Avada Kedavra refills when they use that potion. It is so fast. So you get red, you gotta dodge. Red again. Or oh, Wait, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna get it right this time. Alright, red, dodge. Red again, dodge. And then this one is like a slightly yellowish. That one means you can Protego. Boom, there's Protego right there. Break that attack. A Pugno right to the face. 709 damage. Then we just do our basic shot. Now we got AK fully charged, ready to go. Boom, troll is done. Oh my gosh, this combat is going to be so fun. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. It was levitate by the tongue, right? If there's no romance, is there no love potion? Probably not. 
probably not. Who knows though? Like I'm, I'm not putting limits on anything at this point, given how much they have wowed us today. Uh, we got challenges right here. Cast stupefy at an enemy, defeat an enemy with a Chinese chomping cabbage, perform a dueling combo, one out of 30. Uh, there's the spell icon for Confringo, which they confirmed that too. So a Pugno, by the way, is R1. We've known that for a while. We get com more confirmation of that today. All right, now remember last time Alan talked about the shields. So you got the red shield right here, which means that our character needs to cast Confringo here, or really any red red spell to get rid of that. So right here, you see he's going to stand up. He's got that red shield going. There was, wait, was that? The Confringo kind of looked a little bit, that animation looked a little bit odd right there. I don't know if that's, oh no, they cast Confringo on this dude over here. And then this one right here, I thought he said we would have to use a red spell. Maybe I misunderstood him last time because it looks like we take that shield down by getting that quick deflect. And then we <laughs> then we just then we just crucio him. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to watch that in more detail. I'm still not 100 percent sure what, what's happened. Just the basic shot. That one could be red too. So maybe it's Protego. If you Protego and, and do the <gasps> wait a second. Just a minute ago, we read the part about how if you if you hold triangle after casting Protego, that it will fire off Stupefy. It will fire Stupefy. So I bet that it you hold triangle, it does a quick Stupefy back, breaks the red shield. So Stupefy probably qualifies as the uh, as a, as a combat spell, of course. Another thing I noticed, unforgivable spells break all shields, even the red, purple, and yellow. Interesting. Noob can be like Palpatine and play both sides at the same time. Uh, the female developer's name, her laugh was infectious. She loved seeing Ben's reactions, right? She didn't get to, I don't feel like she talked. I would I would have loved to have heard more from her. That's what everybody said about Boston last time, though, too. Like, let us hear more from Boston. What was her name again? He got Alan and then... Another Hufflepuff, McKenzie, system designer. I, I totally forgot to look at at the house. Another Hufflepuff, McKenzie Toner. All right, back back to the dark arts arena here. Loyalist assassin. All right, that's the part we just saw. He used Imperio to break the shield. It said that unforgivable curses break shields. Oh, okay, that's what you guys were just saying. Yeah. So I guess unforgivable. <laughs> Unforgivable is just straight up break everything. <laughs> they just break everything, man. I could tell people are going to be spending a lot of time in this dark arts battle arena. I feel like it's going to be the one where people just going on the power trip, just going crazy, man. AKing beasts, goblins, humans left and right. Crucio. I can't believe Crucio is like. I mean, we know it's a dark spell from the books. You wonder how much they would lean into that with with the T rating. But dude, it's dark. You hear like those horrified whispers, man. It's crazy. And then you've got the uh, the armored troll dropping in here. Wait, let's watch that again because I think we get another. Yeah, they're dodging every time on the red. And then when you get the, the yellowish gold one, they Protego that. War Machine can't wait for this game to come out. Dude, it looks so good, right? Oh, man, it looks so good. All right, so, guys, we are coming to the end of the stream here. But before we go, I want to say that we do this every week. We just had one last night. And obviously, on the next stream, we're going to have much to discuss. If you guys are just dropping in, if you've never seen my videos before, we post a ton of Hogwarts Legacy videos here on the channel. Check them out. Of course, in the next few days, we're going to have, I don't even know what I'm going to tackle first. I have no idea what video I'm going to make first because there's so many details here that we're going to have to break down. But you can look forward to those videos. Uh, and yeah, join us on Tuesday nights, guys. Live stream every Tuesday night around 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to have plenty more news in the lead up to Hogwarts Legacy. We also have a Discord. You can join that exclamation point Discord in the chat. We'll get you the information for that. Honestly, I'd stay here all day and stream. I'd stay here all day, but uh, I got to get back to my... My regular 9 to 5 job. 
Got to get back to my regular. But thank you all so much for being here. Uh, if you catch us on the replay, or even if you're watching now, make sure to leave a like. Elwin said we had over... Do we have over 500, Elwin? Over 530 people here. Oh, my goodness. I hate to leave with 530 people here. Oh, man. I hate to leave with 530 people, but I, I got to run. It's been a lot of fun, guys. Thank you all so much for choosing. I know there's a lot of streams and a lot of places you can watch. Thank you so much for being here. It really does mean a lot. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at RetroRecontour. Again, the Discord, exclamation point Discord. We'll see it there. You can continue the conversation. It's, it's, there's just going to be so much to discuss here in the in the coming days and weeks in the lead up to this game because it has officially gone gold. Uh, it'll be here before you know it, man. It will be here before you know it. So make sure you guys take some time to enjoy the ride. Uh, and it was good seeing some new faces in here, especially all the people who don't normally get to tune in when we do our... Uh, our evening streams because we have a worldwide audience so i know the timing doesn't work for everybody but guys thank you so much for being here um i'm gonna go ahead and we'll play a little music here in the outro but um thank you all for being here and i'll talk to you again very soon